going to um, we're going to go to Matthew's uh, chapter 11 we are at Matthew's chapter 11 today all right Matthew's chapter 11 and remember um, you, you can participate all right, if you have something to bring out and share, um, this is the time to bring it out and share. You know, this is what this word of God is about, uh, that others, everybody can get edified, okay? So if you have anything, you know, make sure you bring it out. Um, any questions or anything when we're going through it, um, you can ask and, you know, hopefully uh, most high can touch us that we have the right answers, all right? So Matthew chapter 11, and we're going to start from verse one. Matthew chapter 11, and we're gonna start from verse one. And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now, when John had heard in the prison, the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples, and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? It's another word for disciples. So John had, okay. Somebody said what? What was that? Say it again. Teacher. Teacher. Um, no, a teacher has disciples. So what are disciples? Students. So disciples are the students. Right. which I think definitely understood. So um, you'll see certain movies and everything, even um, if you have some of the uh, Chinese flicks, you know, they'll, they'll say they're the disciples of the, you know, their master teacher or whatever. So people have teachers, it's another word for like students. All right, these are my disciples. All right, or some people refer to them as followers. Okay, so when we look in the Bible, sometimes people think disciples is something exclusive to just the 12 um, that follow Christ. A disciple is just a student. Okay. Um, so we see in verse two, now when John had heard in the prison, the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. So if John has two followers, were they of God? Should they have been following John? Throw that out to the class. Were these some wicked uh, people? Because they said they following, read that again, verse uh Verse two, Kai, for everybody. Now, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. So John's in prison, and now he got two of his disciples or followers or students come. Nah, his, his disciples was following him because he followed the most high. Just like that's when Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So that's the reason why they was following John. And they knew what was written of him, you know, in the um, in the Old Testament. Well, not the Old Testament, but what was prophesied? How John was. It was prophesied. Yeah, you were you were right. It is it's prophesied. Right. He's the forerunner. He's the forerunner mm -hmm. before Christ. Yeah, he yeah. came with a message of repentance. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I just that's what I say. I want to throw little questions out because sometimes we'll read and we don't like you know. Take our time to get this stuff. So this is good for us. So we see that there's other people that had disciples as well, had followers as well. And Christ didn't get on them um, because they followed John. He could have he could have addressed it, but he understood how the order go. Yeah, they're following John, but they followed John as John followed uh, God. But we also understand that um, it says he must uh, decrease, I mm -hmm. must increase, right? So John had his followers and everything, but it was a time where they were going to have to transition, right? And they're going to have to follow, you know, who he was actually uh, coming to present, 
right? The forerunner, he was coming to um, introduce somebody. So they would follow him until what? That introduction of, all right, this is the guy. This is the guy whose shoes I'm not able to unlatch. You know, I came and tie his shoes. This how, is this how righteous and holy this guy is. This is what John was saying about this Christ, right? So um, they were following him as much as, you know, he was staying under the will of God and, and, and being used, all right? So these two of his disciples came because John's in prison. So they like, they're going to him, okay? Uh, okay, I'm saying John heard in the prison the works of Christ and he sent two of his disciples, all right? So he's hearing about what Christ is doing and he's like, he's sending the disciples, go, go, go to him, go to Christ. Read. Verse four. Jesus answered and said unto oh, I'm them. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Read verse three again. Okay. <clears throat> I apologize. And he said unto him, art thou he that should come or do we look for another? Okay. Who, who's he asking about? Real quickly, don't think hard on it. <laughs> who's this he that he's asking about? Art thou he that should come? The Messiah. Christ. Okay, thank you. The Messiah, Christ. Whatever. All right. So John's he's in prison. He's hearing about this work. He's like, man, are you the one? Or we 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 waiting for somebody else. We waiting for another Messiah. All right. So he has a question. All right. Go ahead, read verse four. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and shoot John again these things, those things which ye do hear and see. All right. So now Jesus is responding. We always want to definitely listen up when Jesus is talking and definitely responding. So they came to him and asked him, are you that guy or not? And Jesus saying, he said, go and show, remember show, all right, shoe or show, go and shoe John again, those things which you do hear and see. Okay, so basically saying what? Testify to John. The things you hearing, what you see, testify to him. Okay, show him that, tell him that. Read. The blind received their sight and the lame walk. And lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Uh, yeah, we'll stop there. So what is the response that he gave them in layman's terms? Because some people are like, he ain't really give them an answer. He ain't really answer it. Mm -hmm. What? Christ, he answered it. Yeah. If you can receive it, oh, he answered him. He was basically saying that the works that he was doing prove who he is at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It's the works. All right. So we're going to see that blind received the sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Tell them this. Because what were these things that he's naming, that Christ is naming and telling John's disciples as a, as a response? What is he act, What is he saying right there? What he's showing he signs. Yes. Signs from what? So Zuli has something. What, what was, what was proph prophesied? Go ahead. Okay. Zuli, you had something as well? Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> signs and... Uh, right on the money he's like i tell you a new thing what did the scriptures say that the messiah is going to come and do and this is what we have to get to and understand see sometimes we want something we want something extra or something new that other people didn't get god's saying i gave you the scriptures what's the point of me giving you all these scriptures and then you're going to ask me for another sign you see how god ain't going to always give you something extra now well, how do I know, Lord, we ain't going to, we ain't supposed to eat that pork chop. Lord, I'm praying to her. And you think you're going to get that, the voice of coming from heaven saying, you should eat it, my son or my daughter, my child. No. He's going to say, well, I'm going to stir up, just like every old time, I'm going to stir up a, a, a man or woman of God, somebody going to address it and say, what's written in me, written about that? He did not give him nothing new. He said, what? He said, the signs of the Messiah, he's going to do these things. For a believer, that should be enough. Same thing with us. When somebody go to scriptures, that should be enough. If you need something more than that, you need to check your spirit. And I'm talking about things that are clearly written, okay? All right, 
let's go to Isaiah. I want to look at some. Let's go to Isaiah 35. And we're staying in this uh in Matthews all day. So I just want to add something. And a lot of things when it comes to the prophecy, it's, it's, it's no problem if you don't understand certain things. There's a lot of prophecies that you know really got to study and look at. And they sometimes it can it, it's they're in like a it's like a chapter, but it's like sometimes a verse or two will be talking about a prophecy, then like the rest of it's going somewhere else. So sometimes it, it does require some studying and um putting things in respective order as well. All right. Um let me see. Is this what I want? Yes. Uh, give me verse one. We ain't going to go through this whole thing. Give me verse one. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. All right. Uh, go down to verse. Just give me right to the point. Verse four. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance even God with their recompense and he will come and save you. All right. So God's going to do this. Now we understand there is um, when that wrath coming and everything, that is a certain time that did not come yet. There is a wrath coming and recompenses, but there's certain things that still address that happens now or had happened. Okay. Verse five, listen to this. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. We understand this. This is dealing with doctrinal things as well. It's not um, always literally blind, but at the same time, it is talking about naturally blind as well. Okay. So naturally, God, when he comes in his presence and the spirit comes, naturally people are going to be what? Healed. Okay. On a carnal level with their natural eyes and naturally being deaf, right? But also on a spiritual level where what? You can be opened up to understanding and knowledge. Okay. <clears throat> Verse six. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. So this is something that, like I said, Christ gives a little taste of some things. And I say just a little taste, right? Just to understand this is him. But when it comes later on down the line, it's going to be very, very much um, more abundant than what we have witnessed um, when, during this time. OK, so he was showing us the might of God. This is why I tell my God with us, because God does this right. Father does this, but he used Christ as an instrument to show you, OK, this is the person I'm, I'm using him. And this is why Nicodemus testifies, saying, listen, man, I know I know you can't do this stuff unless God be with you. I know they call you all kinds of names, but God got to be with you to open up the eyes of the blind. The deaf can start hearing, the lame, it, they, they can't walk, and now they can, they jumping up, leaping. We know God got to be with you for these things to happen, okay? And this is why in another account, it talks about, he said, he, he was telling me, he said, believe me for my very work's sake. Mm -hmm. Like, he might not believe a lot of things, maybe you can't understand certain things, but at least you can be able to see the works and see that, you know, God is with us, right? So, um, these are things that are shown as well. Um, let me get to Isaiah chapter 61. Then we'll go right back. And if anybody have anything to add, um, you can add to it. All right. I'm not giving a million things. I just want to uh, go through it. Because it talked about, let me go back to the Matthew account this, so we can keep it in our mind. So read that verse 5 again um, in Matthew 11, 5. The blind received their sight in the name walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. So we know he's supposed to be coming doing a lot of mighty works. And there's a lot of scriptures in the in prophecy that we can, we can kind of go to, all right? But I just want to show you. So we see that. But there's another part. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. Mm -hmm. All right? Because now he's saying that as in that's, that's supposed to be an answer to, is this the Christ? All right, so this is the response. We have to find this. The poor have the gospel preached to them. All right, it's not just talking about the beggar as in only got $5 poor that's going to receive the gospel. Deeper than that. All right, let's go to Isaiah 61. Um, Elder, I, I'll give you the floor right after this, if that's okay. All right. Isaiah 61, 
I want you to read from verse one. Let's take our time with this one. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Mm -hmm. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So y'all see that? The spirit of the, of the Lord God is upon me. I know it's saying, Isaiah is saying this, he's prophesying. If you need proof, it's in the New Testament. I don't know the exact spot right now. Um, but he actually reads this verse. Christ reads this verse and said, today in your ears is this scripture fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he directly quotes this. So he's, he said, this is happening right now. I'm doing it right now. Because the Lord have anointed me, right? So Christ was anointed to what? Preach. Preach what? The gospel. That's the good tidings. Mm -hmm. He's preaching this good news unto who? The meek. This is why it's very important that we have mm -hmm. that kind of that spirit. He wasn't preaching that. He's preaching it to the meek. Those that are lowly. Those that need it. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. There were some people that were brokenhearted. Someone was losing faith. Someone was losing faith in the most high God, feeling like, you know what? We've just been abandoned. Where is God? He's not, he's not paying attention to us. He was over there reassuring. Look, I'm here. God did not forsake you. That's why you'll realize it's when we, when you understand what Christ is doing, it was a rejoicing time. Because it seemed like God was removed from a lot of things. The, 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 uh, the preachers and everything, right? The teachers, they was messing things up and taking the laws and these things that's supposed to be sacred and holy. So when Jesus come on the scene, he's magnifying his law. He's correcting those things that they were messing up. He was what? He was binding up broken hearts. And this is what we supposed to be doing because a lot of people think you ain't supposed to be, well, you know, somebody's sad and everything. Well, you know, man up, woman up. No, this guy's supposed to be a comfort to them as well. This is supposed to be medicine. All right. So bind up the broken heart to proclaim liberty to the captives. Who were the captives during the time of Christ? Throw that question out. Maybe you don't know. I know. Who were the captives? Who were the captives? His people were captives. Yeah, and this is not talking about in the sense of uh, being in prison. They were uh, in captives as far as sin. They was in, in, um, in iniquity. Uh -huh. Yep. So it became liberty to them, but also even when we go to it, they were naturally captives, right? Remember when Christ was, um, he was getting all these followers and the high priest said, y'all don't know nothing. Don't you know it's better that one man die for us than we lose our nation, our place? That sounds like somebody captive, right? Because if you ain't captive, you ain't worried about nobody doing nothing. But they were under a captivity, all right? So, but to proclaim liberty to the captives, of course, I'm glad Brother Kai brought out, but spiritually, right? How do we become captive? Captive to sin, captive to this world. He was breaking people from that bondage. I know because what? The law, some of these laws was binding people. We understood it, right? You did certain things. Oh, you done. You kicked out of Israel. Or oh, they go to death. And he was coming there what? Giving liberty. Not saying you can sin and do all those things. Like, listen, all right. When he healed somebody, what was the famous line he would say after that? Not Kai or Shona. Oh, 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 oh. Let me see if somebody else got it. What was the what's the famous line he says after that? Go and say not. Go and say There we go. Uh -huh. there, we go. there we go. Nah, it could be more than one person. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. All right. Go and sin no more. Right? Uh -huh. I'm freeing you from the sin, right? You being captive to sin, being bound to sin. Because what? You could just knock that thing off according to that law right and listen way to like atonement and stuff but there's certain things he's captive to so he will heal him up and saying go sin no more because a lot of diseases we said sin brings on what he's talking about it last night the the killing and what diseases and plagues and things of that nature i love how the classes is sometimes they mix right in right 
So we set them see from some, we set them free for some of that, right? People don't realize that. So he was doing those things and opening up the prison to them that are bound. They was bound in sin. They was bound in darkness. They was in the chains of iniquity. And he was setting them free because God was coming and saying, you know what? I hear y'all. I hear y'all cry. And I'm with y'all. Verse two. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. All right. So he's going to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. All right. And this is the acceptable time of salvation. We can, we can, we can grab onto it. If you want to. Also, the day of vengeance of our God, because he's telling y'all, listen, we, I'm going to still, I have to come back. Right. Paul and them was talking about it. Listen, Christ is going to come back and he ain't coming back all peaceful. He ain't going to be letting you smack him up and spit on him. Mm -mm. That time has passed. The next time he coming, he's over there whooping heads now. There's a day coming that we have to be prepared. And to comfort all them that mourn. Because a lot of times when you are in captivities, right, you start to what? Lose hope. We see our brothers and sisters now. What happened? A lot of people what? Losing hope. They're forgetting about their God. They're starting to do whatever they want to do because they're like, God ain't seeing us. He ain't hearing us. Just like our forefathers. Where is he? Is he not keep? Is he not taking knowledge to what we're doing? We fast and praying and we're trying to seek him. He ain't keeping. He ain't. He ain't taking no knowledge of this. And God said, Uh, uh, uh. He said, Y'all doing all this other stuff too. That's why I'm far from you. All right. So he was comforting people. Christ was comforting, saying, Ah, oh, the Father's here. The Father hear you. Repent, believe in me, and you shall be saved. Um, is that all I want here? Uh, give me verse three, and then we'll go back. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. See that? That's what he's doing. And that comes with the spirit. All right? Those that are mourning, they should be what? They want to be comforted. Mm -hmm. You hungry and for the God. You want to be fed. You want to be filled. So he was coming doing these things. You was in the ashes. You were you were low. When somebody's in ashes, think of think of like people that's that on the streets and everything. They they're in ashes. They they're they're in a low state. Even fasting, they used to have to put um sackcloth and ashes on, showing themselves and and mourning in a low state. He said, "I'm gonna give you beauty for that now. I give you the oil of joy for mourning. This thing is spiritual that he's doing. This transition because he's giving them a new mind. He's giving them a spirit." I know you've been very low and you've been trotted down, but look, I'm here now. He's saying the Father's using me to, to, to give y'all this gospel and it's going to build you up if you can receive it. All right. All right, let's go back to Matthew. I think some people had some stuff, so I'll open it up to anybody. Well, only thing I wanted to share was you gave a great example of grace in action. Whenever someone say, or go about grace and they try to use grace. We know as we got into this word what grace is, but grace in action is when Jesus tells people, go and sin no more. It's grace in action. Go, sin no more. Because for sin, we were supposed to be killed immediately. So it gives an example of grace in action. Grace. The other thing that I wanted to introduce, in church, a lot of times I hear church, especially people that are fully engaged in church, and they say, how come you don't see any miracles now? How come people are not being raised from the dead? And you touched on that beautifully by saying, it's just not literal. There are literal people Jesus raised, but a lot of them were set free. If you're dead in trespasses and sin, and you get set free, you're alive again. Now you have, you, you have the hope for eternal life. Mm -hmm. So I was glad you touched on that. So that's always the key. And then for this generation we're in now, when people start asking you all these things about signs, the thing, the key thing is said, he did give you a sign, Jonah, three days and three nights. 
because he said to a wicked and perverse generation, there's going to there's not going to be any signs but that sign. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. To add on to what Elder was saying, like you know, I, I totally agree. The dead, you know, are raised up because you remember with the law sheet, you know, and we ain't got to go to it or nothing. But he said, my son was dead, but now he's alive again. You know, he was alive because you know. He, this word was preached to him, you know, he accepted it, and now he's walking back into it again. You know, when, whenever you stray away from the Father, you know, you are dead in your sins. You are basically walking All dead. praises. Basically dead. All praises. All praises. Yep. Definitely in right on the, on the head, you know, this is what we got to realize. <laughs> you know what, you worrying about being risen from the dead to die a couple more years after that, I don't care if you get ready for the door. You still gonna die. I can't, you ain't gonna stay living. But why not rejoice on you spiritually being woken up when you can get eternal life? That's what you should be thankful for. That's what our forefathers sometimes didn't get. Y'all worry, worry about the, the natural miracles, right? That's still temporary. I'm, we should be worried about what? Things above, eternal. That's why he said, let the, dead, let the dead bury the dead. Sometimes we focus on dead things. And I'm not taking away from the miracles. But I want us to understand our focus should be on things heavenly, above. Just like if he heal you uh, and he give you 10 more years, that's a beautiful thing. Rejoice in that. But shouldn't you rejoice much now that he's took you out of darkness and brought you into the light? All praises, all praises. Choice for like one of you your brothers might know. Go ahead. One of you brothers might know, but the one thing that I want to say when you were saying when you're in captivity, you are in a you get into a low state. You you can get very lowly. As a matter of fact, there's a scripture that Jesus said, "When the Son of Man returns, shall he find faith?" So he's even find faith. I forget what the scripture's at, but he's wondering. He's not wondering. He already knows. But this thing is going to get pretty rough. And he said, when he when he returns, will he even find faith? Faithful people that are still serving him. Mm. If someone knows where that is, I appreciate I'll put it in their chat. No, great. Um, great point. Will he find faith when he comes? But this is why we should always be rejoicing. We should always have, and no matter how low things get, and that's one thing I, I keep in my forefront, no matter how bad it can get on this earth, I always have to be thankful to most High. Because the most that can happen here the lows is death. That's the only thing that, that every reward is going to be led here. But we know with Christ, when we accepted him, we got something to look forward to. We know it ain't going to last always. All right. All right. Um, we'll go back to Matthews 11. Um, the sister did put on the board about the uh, what I was asking for. John, the John 14, 11, and 12. Um, believe me for my very work's sake. So if you ever want to look at that, um, that's John 14. Verse 11 and 12. Um, thank you, sister, putting that up there. All right, so we're back at Matthews 11 and verse 6. All right, verse 6. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, what went ye out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? Um, so I want I, I do want to realize that's the only answer he gave to John the Baptist. When he's asking, are you Christ? And this is what people realize is like, why didn't he answer him? He could have just said yes or no. But if you understood, he did answer him. This is why when we go to Paul, Paul saying, I go to them that what? What's the finish of that? Know the law. Yeah, not go to them, but talking to them that know the law, all right? So he's talking to people that know the law. When you know the law, certain answers are very easy, very clear. You don't need all the little, mm -mm. When he gave him this verse, it's more powerful. Because so what if he said, yeah, I'm that guy? Is that really going to be your believable thing? Oh, I, I, yeah, I'm that guy. <laughs> Everybody can say, yeah, I'm that guy. That, that's not really an answer. But when he's saying, he pointing them back to the scriptures, now John has to do what? Do you believe what is written? The scripture said, this is what the Messiah is going to do. I'm feeling 
what this thing, I'm fulfilling what the prophet said. What do, else do you need? If you need me to confirm it from my mouth, you don't believe what the scripture is saying. You, <laughs> that ain't going to help you. And this is why a lot of times we ask questions. A lot of times we need to point them back to the scriptures because you got to believe what the scripture is saying. I care how I, I might break it down to you. No matter what I believe, what my thoughts is, what the scripture is saying. Because the scripture is not going to fail. Okay? Um, I'm sorry, brother. So now in verse 7, Jesus began to say to the multitude concerning John. So he's talking about John. What do you come to the wilderness to see? Why you come out here? A reed shaking with the wind, right? You know the reeds that be out there in the wind. Push it, all right? Um, go ahead, keep reading. But what were ye out for to see? A mm -hmm. man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. So you trying to see somebody that's, that's, that's look all miraculous, right? You know, Christ talking about the uh, the gay apparel. You looking at you try to look at somebody with the, nowadays. You say you know the, the three piece suit and all this stuff and the, the five hundred dollar gated shoes and, and the belt and and you know, this, is this what you came out here to see? Somebody in this you know the soft raiment. If you looking for that, he's saying what? You can go to the what? Go to the palace. Go to go to where kings are at. Where the rich people at. If you want to see that. <clears throat> Verse nine. But what were ye out for to see a prophet? Yeah, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. Mm. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger for before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. All right. So verse 9, it says, oh, did, what did you come out? So he's throwing all these things. What did you come out to see? A reed shaking in the wind. Is that what you came to the wilderness to see? Did you come out here to see somebody clothed in this um, in certain apparel, expensive apparels, right? Did you you come out here to see that? Oh, you can't. Did you come out here to see a prophet, a man of God speaking God's words? He said, "What a prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. Yeah, you, if you wanted to see a prophet, yep, you got that and some. Okay, read verse ten again for me. Uh, uh." For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. When this says this, what is this saying? What is verse 10 saying? Let me throw that out there. What is verse 10 saying? Sean raised his hand. What was that? Sean raised his hand. Oh, go ahead, brother Sean. It's just saying that um, it's written already. It was already it was already prophesied. It was already prophesied before time that this will um that that John the Baptist was going to come and prepare the way for Christ. If you read Malachi three and one, that's where we're going next. Yes, whenever you see it is written, meaning this was already prophesied. This was already talked about, and anytime you see that, a lot of time we're reading. It's a little habit. Go to what is written, because sometimes you'll see when it, when you go to the prophecy. Sometimes it's a little, it's sometimes give a little more detail or things of that nature. So sometimes it's always good to go back to see what it is. Okay. So um, Sean is right on the money. Behold, I send my may said it is written. So that means it's already in the book. You you should already know. And when he said it's written, basically you should know. Okay, it's written there. It's written for what? So you can see it. All right. So it's Malachi three. Um, I know it's at the end of the chapter. No, no, three and one. Three and one. I'm about to say it's in the, the first part. Uh, yes, thank you. All right, so Malachi chapter three and verse one. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. It's another one that gives uh, a little more detail. This is a good one, but uh, Isaiah 40, I believe. What? I believe. You believe enough for us to go there? Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> All right. Uh, so this one, um, behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. 
All right, I want everybody to grab that. Prepare the way before me, okay? And the Lord who used to assume. So I just want to show that he's preparing the way. So this is why when he was preaching, when John the Baptist was talking, he's preparing the way. He was saying, somebody's coming that's greater than me. What are you doing? He's prepping us. He was prepping us for the Messiah. Don't get caught up on me. There's somebody's coming. Y'all have to get ready for him. Y'all got to repent. That was his teaching, okay? So he's preparing the way. All right, um, Isaiah... You said chapter 40? 40. It's about the same thing, you know. But Sorry, that's good to see. Yeah, it goes with something else, but this one might be better with what Sean was talking about. Uh, verse 3. 3. Mm -hmm. It says, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our Lord, for our God. So I, mm -hmm. Keep reading. The voice of him that cries, oh, sorry. every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the mm -hmm. crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain. All right. So we can go to all of it, but remember, because we read that a few chapters back when John, when I think we got to Matthews and John the Baptist was going, we read this because it actually uh, was uh, quoted this one. Okay. So just showing that it's in the book, you know, these things wasn't something that's miraculously coming. They knew this stuff had to come about. All right. So uh good, good precepts, both of you brothers. Good precepts, both talking about him. All right. All right. Back to Matthews. Oh, this is to put uh, Mark 1 and 2. Yes, that's a, a good one as well. Sure. As is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. So John was preparing the way. He was not the way, he was preparing the way. And I think John, if you go to John uh, chapter 1, I think it actually talks about that too. John was not the light, but he was where professing, you know. So he was the preparation person for uh, Christ. All right. Elder, you got your hand up. Go ahead. It, it was written that it was written also that John was going to come in the spirit of Elisha, and that same spirit, the same spirit that Elisha had, he was going to come in that spirit as well. Oh yeah, he, we're going to get to it. We're going to get. Yeah, okay, we're going to get to it. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not going to. I'm not. I'll, I'll stop. Okay, go ahead. No, no, it's fine. No, when it, when it comes to that, um, bring it up, bring it back up. But we're going to go right into that, so everybody be right on. Uh, on the same page, you just in case they don't know, All right? Um, what verse we have, brother? Verse eleven. All right. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of a woman, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So that's a big thing. All right. Saying anybody born of a woman, that's a that's it's a good compliment. Um, none of them is greater than John the Baptist. Anybody born of woman, anybody of birth is not greater than John the Baptist. But withstand, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than him. All right, so he's making that comparison. You can be great um, um, birth and everything, you, as great as you can be here, but in the, in the kingdom of heaven, the greatest person now is not going to be um, greater than the least person in the kingdom. Okay? It's the kingdom of heaven. That's what we're trying to get to. All right, uh, verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffer a violence, and the violence take it by force. For the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffer violence. What are some violence that the kingdom of heaven suffering? well some of the violence goes all the way back to when satan was thrown that was some of the violence there for the rebellion on his behalf so, so i want to get right to this part that'll be a different conversation Suffer violence because he's, he's saying from the days of John the Baptist. So that gives us what a stamp of when he's talking about. 
So the stamp going to be from John the Baptist, he said, until now. So anything before that, I don't want to grab. And, and like I said, I understand where you're going. I don't want to grab nothing before it. I don't want to go too far. I want to give this stamp of what this verse is saying. But you can bring that understanding to that to this per this part. So you see, y'all. I just want to make sure everybody's seeing it. You see how it says, and from the days of John the Baptist. So it's giving us a starting point, somewhat. All right. Until now, the kingdom of heaven suffer violence. What are some ways the kingdom of heaven is suffering violence? What's been happening since John the Baptist? Say that again. Strife. Strife. That's part of it, absolutely. Dealing with that strife. Because it's saying it's suffering violence. So what was the violence happening from John the Baptist's time? Well, the prophets are being killed along the way as well. No. Getting persecuted, um, people are are um, going against, you know, this gospel and everything. Were they receiving John the Baptist, or people that was, you know, really uh, spreading this this knowledge, or so called the gospel? How were they being treated? Some were stoned, some was cut asunder, all kind of things happened to them violently, beheaded. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of violence happening about, and they're doing it forcefully. All right, uh, if my sister in, read the next part, verse 13. This is what Elder Murray coming to that. For all the prophets in the law prophesied unto John. So all the prophets in the law prophesied until John. What is that saying? What can verse 13 be talking about? Uh, go ahead, Brother Sean. Can raised. Um, <clears throat> basically, because we know it was prophesied that who was going to come. The law and the prophet. The prophet, they was all talking about, you know, love, but also about, about, about Christ was coming. So they also were saying that John was going to pave the way for him. So we knew when he got to John, the Baptist, he was paving the way for the Messiah to come. You know what I mean? So that's why it says the, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violence they were forced. The violent, the violent is the one that's going against the kingdom of God. And we know it was our people. You know what I mean? It was the Pharisees and the Sadducees, known people. They going against the prophets, killing them, stoning them. They were violent ones because they didn't believe. And that's why when you get to verse 15, you're going to see about the ears running here. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Great point. The laws and the prophets, right? That's, that's why all of them, when you read this Bible, they all say it's written, it's written. When it says it's written, what is that? What is it talking about? Where's it written? The only thing that's written is what? The laws and the prophets. So for all the prophets and all the laws prophesied, right? Until John, right? They all talk about this Christ and everything and all this stuff. John gets on the scene, right? And John is the last push. This is the guy, this is the guy. But what happened during John's time? Now what? Who comes on the scene? The laws and the prophets, what are they prophesying? What are they trying to point to the Savior. All right. They're trying to point to Christ the Savior. And then John comes on the scene and he's telling you what? He's prophesying, saying that somebody's coming. Whose shoes I'm not worthy, you know, to latch. 
until John. So they all probably they point to this thing. They've all been telling us about this crisis person coming. And it ends with John because during John time, Christ is going to come. Okay, which he did. And he's here talking. All right. Now, verse 14. And if you will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. Mm -hmm. He that have ears to hear, let him hear. All right. What does it mean? This says, he that have ears to hear, let them hear. What does that mean? Because you'll see that. I think even Revelation has talked about that. There's a lot of people earless. There's a lot of people not have ears during those times. You know, he's like, yo, the people that got ears, you know, because there's a lot of y'all that don't have no ears. Y'all that have ears, I want y'all to hear this. Is that, is that what's happening? Saying um, those who are thirsting for this word, hear it. Listen. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Sean, you got your hand raised? Yeah, um, basically, who understands this? The ones who understand this can do to this. Harkin to us, because most I said at the beginning. So we know everybody got ears, people can hear, so the ones who are deaf. But that's why I said he's gonna, he gonna um, hear the ones that's deaf and all that, given, because everybody going to understand his word. Mm -hmm. So the ones who get understanding through the Spirit, that's why when Christ told the disciples, he said, that's my speaking parables. He said, I speak to you because you don't understand this. Everyone's not going to be able to understand this. So that's why he says, you have to hear let him hear. Because the ones who won't hear this and get understanding, they're going to take heed to this. People gonna, other people going to hear it, walk away, or just talk. Uh, they, they just talk to dumb. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Great point. A lot of people have ears, but you'd be like, you, you hear me, but you ain't listening. You hear people say, you hear me, but you ain't listening, right? Your ears is to hear so you can comprehend and get it. So he's like, you'd have ears, like, understand it's, it's, it's dealing with uh, spiritual, like, it's the vow was bringing out. If you will receive it, this is the lies which was for to come. He that has ears, let him hear. Understand this. Now we want to get some understanding if we didn't understand it. Hold this spot. Let's go to Malachi. I think so. Uh, let's see what spot it's at. This is the one I was talking about. That's it at the end of it that I messed up before. All right. So we go to Malachi chapter uh, four. Malachi chapter four. All right. Um, Won't scare nobody with that one. Let's go down to verse four. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. All right, so he's telling them, remember the law of Moses. This is very, it's kind of funny because everybody thought I throw it away. Um, Malachi is the last chapter um, in the Old Testament, just so everybody know. All right, it's the last chapter, very short book. Remember ye the law of Moses, who? My servants. If you're a servant of God, whose laws you need to remember? The law of Moses, because where did Moses get the law from? The Most High, sure. all right? Oh, you had a question? Go ahead. No, I was just gonna, I was just gonna try it in that the whole time John the Baptist was saying, repent, he was telling them, remember, because this is the book of remembrance. It's in Malachi as well. He was telling them, remember, repent. And you just brought it up. Repent. Remember, he was getting them to go back to look at what he told us back in, in, in on, the, on Mount Sinai when he gave us these commandments. He was telling them, remember, repent. Remember, you got to repent because he's coming. He was crying out to them to go back and remember what we should have been remembering when we said, when all of us stood, when our forefathers stood before the Most High and said, everything you said, we'll do. Hmm. He was trying to bring them back to that. And which, the same thing we're supposed to be doing right now. The, hmm. the same thing we are doing. 
that we have to continue doing. And you made a great point last night, and I'm bringing that back up again. When you try, you don't have to give a million precepts to people. Once you show them what this is and they reject it, shake the dust. I think we spend a lot of time trying to win people over. So this is a great point where you bring it up that refers back to last night. It goes back to even last night. You don't have to give people a million scriptures. You know, and I learned something great from Brother Kai. He told me a couple months ago, because I, I didn't look at it the way, but it, 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 it really, as he said, smote my heart when he said, people actually hate God. And that's what we got to realize. Even some of our family members, they hate God. Yep. Yeah. Not, it, it's true. It's true. And we love and we want to, you know, we'll, as humanly possible, you know, we got good hearts. So we, we want everybody, you know, to come into this truth and knowledge, you know. But the, you know, the, um, the ugly truth or the sad reality is everybody don't want this. Everybody don't want to do it. And sometimes we have to accept that. All right. So verse four, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgment. Read verse five. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. That's why I come and smite the earth with a curse. All right, so this is where he's over there, and, and we this wasn't a dreadful day when Christ was coming, but he was coming there to what? Bring people back to it. Y'all need to go back to these laws and commandments. Y'all need to get back to it. Y'all need to repent. Y'all y'all getting far away. So he said, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Go back to Matthews. Read verse 14 again. And if you will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. Hopefully y'all can receive it now. <laughs> All right. This was the Elijah that he was talking about, what that was supposed to come. That's why I said, which was for to come. The one that he talked about before time that was supposed to come. This is what he's dealing with. This is the one that's supposed to be bringing it back. All right. Because he's dealing with right now, who's, who's he talking about? Who's Christ uh, explaining? So if anybody's paying attention. What was he talking about? What's the context of this, what we're going through right now? We ain't starting the chapter over, but <laughs> who was this? Who was he dealing with? He was dealing with the disciples, if you look in, in its entire. He was, that's where he started out dealing with. Mm -mm. He was started, he, he got right into somebody commanded. else. Remember, he went in the whole spill. What was he dealing with? Verse uh Kyrie, verse uh seven. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the disciples concerning John, mm. What went ye out into the wilderness to see a reed shaken with the wind? All right. So he's saying what? He's talking to the multitude, and Elder he was right. We started in verse one, he was talking, um, he said the end of command of his disciples, right? So he was dealing with that. Verse seven, it went to what? Now he's starting to expound to the multitude concerning John. And this is what the context is. This is why I say we want to read the context so we can get it. So he's breaking down John and all that stuff. He's the, um, the nobody greater among um, people that was born of women then John, right, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. Who's the this is? That's John, okay? All right, um, where are we at, verse 16? Um, yes. All right, brother, you can read. It's, it says, but whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets, and calling unto the fellows and saying, we have piped unto you and you have not hold it, hold it. Uh Verse 16. What is he, what is he giving? He's giving more of an analogy or an example. All right. So I want you to understand that. Whereunto shall I liken this generation to? What does that mean? What is he saying right there? Where to shall I liken this generation? And then he's starting to explain. What does it mean to liken something to something? 
compared it. All right. All right. So, yes, he's about to compare this generation to this example or parable he's going to give. Mm-hmm. Because I think Sean talked about it earlier. He said, I talked to parables to them. But he said, the disciples, I tell y'all <laughs> what it is. But when I'm talking to them, I'm giving them parables. I ain't give them this pure, this pure gold and, and pearls, right? I give them parables. If they can receive this parable, they can receive this analogy, then they can get that there's a deeper meaning in it. Then they can come to it. And then I can feed them, you know, the true stuff. But a lot of times we ain't giving them parables. We giving them straight, you know, the pearls. And sometimes we give them those pearls before swine. God didn't always give you knowledge to give, give uh, pearls to everybody. Okay. So he's given a parable. But in the parable, if you understand the parable, it's a lot of, it's, it's, it's some jewels in it, okay? So he said, how should I liken this generation to? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows, all right? So they're like children. It's like children calling to fellows, all right? Verse 17. And saying, we have piped onto you and you have not danced. We have mourned onto you and you have not lamented. So these children are asking and saying, they're talking to the fellows like, listen, I'm piping to you, right? We we playing music. You know how we, when we hear music, you know, we just start rocking on accident, right? So the children are like, I'm playing music and y'all ain't moving. Y'all ain't dancing. And he's saying, we mourn to you. And y'all not even, y'all not even um, crying with me, right? Y'all not even what? In a sense of comforting or having empathy towards me. You know, when somebody's crying, what do we usually do when somebody's crying? Oh, you all right? You okay? But he's saying, we crying. And you ain't even lamenting with us. You ain't even having compassion with us that we're crying. All right, let's keep going. Let's see what this is dealing with. For John came neither eating, for John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he have a devil. Like, man, John ain't come eating and drinking. This is not talking about what is this talking about? Let me let me let me let me put that out there. Is this saying John ain't never eat? Or drinking anything. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I got to do this for people that kind of, but I want everybody to understand and we all get understanding even how the the Bible talks, right? Neither eating nor drinking. It said John ain't came neither eating or drinking. He didn't do a bunch of celebrating. Mm -hmm. You know, he was focused on the task at hand, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he wasn't going there eating um spreads all these different things and um which is not a sin right. and he's saying you're drinking right he wasn't going out there even drinking good stuff because a lot of times when you're married what do you do you eat right you have feast you're eating and you're drinking right he's saying john didn't come that way and what did they do called him a devil and if you ever need a precept for this one you can look and i think it's in it might be in matthews about he um wore camel hair and he, he um his meat was locust Somebody want to go strange and say he never ate anything. All right. So <clears throat> they said he has a devil. Okay. Let's read verse 19. The son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, behold, a glut, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but mm-hmm. wisdom is justified of her children. So what is Christ showing here? He gave the analogy and then he's giving you the actual, um, revelation of the acknowledge of the analogy he used okay what is he saying here 18 and 19 what is he saying it's like they gonna always see you you know as something else no matter what's going on <laughs> That is true. And what? And give give me more. What do you mean by this? He has something else. You're right on the right track. It's like they you know, always have something to say. Everything. Like you can do good, and they always you know have something to talk about you. You know, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Never satisfied. I'm gonna get you right after this, Elder. Never satisfied. You say, oh, I, I would serve God if I had, if the man of God was, you know, he just ate a certain way, he was soft-spoken, I would serve God that way. 
Oh, I will serve God if the if the man of God, you know, he was loud and animated and yelling and saying this is that. God's saying, I gave you both scenarios. He said, I bought you, John, a reserved person. He wasn't drinking. He wasn't eating. And y'all said he got a devil. Then somebody comes eating and drinking, and y'all saying he's a glutton, a wine bibber, a friend of publicans. It's like, what, what do you want? And this is what God, this, this is the thing about God. God loves us so much that he tries to give us what we can kind of, that something we'll gravitate to. And we will, just to show us, we really don't want to serve him. And I want y'all to realize, it don't matter what you do. If somebody don't want to serve God, they don't want to serve him. I don't care if you come soft-spoken, if you come hard. If you don't want to serve him, you will always find an excuse. And this is the thing, you'll find an excuse why you don't want to take, take hold of it. I don't like, I don't like that, you know, the class is, is seven hours long. Okay, there's a spot that it don't have to be that long. I I like it. The church got to be be huge and everything. For their church is big, their church is small. But the thing is, you have to make sure you are in the right frame of mind, or you be going to be just like these people. Never satisfied, always complaining. Okay, so they saying John is the devil when he's doing this, and now they're getting on uh, Christ. But wisdom is justified of her children. Us that's going to be wise and have understanding, we, we're going to gravitate. We're going to see these things, and we're going to see our need. A lot of times when people like this, they don't see their need. Okay, we have to see our need. This is why Peter's saying, you know, where can we go? You have the words of eternal life. I don't care what people are saying, all this other. We need you need to see your need. Okay. But no matter, you can't make everybody happy. Uh Elder, you had something? You pretty much summed it up. <clears throat> you got <clears throat> the only thing I would say is you gotta have thick skin when you get when you get this truth. When you separate, because it causes you to separate yourself. Mm -hmm. And I would say, realistically, you're not going to have a large crew with you. You're not going to have many people, mm -hmm. but you got to get thick skin because people look, if you think they looked at you crazier when you was running in them doors on Sunday, wait till you separate and get into this. You'll really have some people, family members and other people outside. They will begin to look at you even stranger. They're going to call you out on some things, mm -hmm. but you got to have thick skin because as you stand for this truth, and say to people, oh, no, I, I don't do. What about Friday night? I don't do. I, I got Sabbath. You will be looked at differently. You have to grow some thick skin. Mm -hmm. No, you do. And that's true. And we try to be about, like I said, when people giving you a bunch of excuses, just believe them. <laughs> you know, sometimes we, we try to we try to force them and think, no, they really want to. Sometimes they don't want to. You know, they'll find a way. Oh, they got to, this is a problem. This is why, if it wasn't for this, you know, um, but God already showed us this, this these people want to come about, all right? Can't change the people sometimes. You just have to, you know, accept the fact, all right? Uh, anybody had anything before we continue reading verse 20? Very good. All right, verse 20. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. <laughs> right. You know, people say, well, if we, and this is we get to the next point, if we was, if, if the people, the men of God and the leaders of God, if they were healing like they were in the Bible days, I will come to God. Read that again. They be, then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. God was doing mighty works. Mm -hmm. They still didn't repent. They seen where it was coming through the Red Sea when they got delivered from Egypt. Didn't they see 10 plagues? Didn't they go through the Red Sea? And when they got to that wilderness, what were they doing? Still rebelling. Still saying, Moses, I know I seen God use you through all that, but I think, I, 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 I don't think you have God, man. I, and they, they, you know, they start talking against Moses. Y'all see the, 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 how our mind is? He just did 10 huge plagues. And then we walked through the, it ain't like we've seen it. it, it 
it was no uh, green screen or nothing. We walked through the Red Sea. These brothers couldn't even last a couple of years without murmuring against Moses. Not just murmuring, they want Moses killed. Now, I ain't going to lie, beloved. I ain't going to say I would have never spoke something, but I, you, it would have kept me for some years. Moses would have been, he would have been a man to me for a long time after seeing all those miracles. But no, our people, that's how rough our people are. Sometimes they, what you've done, what are you doing for me lately? I don't care what you did before, Lord. I need you to do miracles that day right now. But through all this, say they will not repent. Christ, like, I did mighty works there, and y'all didn't repent. Now I'm going to upgrade it. Now I got to, now, since you don't want to repent, I'm going to have to what? Throw out some rebuking and some judgment now. Because it's not a game of just, oh, heal me from this, heal me from this. No, the healing is for a reason. It's so God can get the glory. If we didn't understand it. This whole thing is that God get the glory. This Bible is about God getting the glory. It ain't about how men, women can elevate over somebody else. No, we are all on the same level. God gets the glory. That's what this thing is about. All right. We giving out the word of God is to clean people up. Not that they follow us or join uh, lines or anything like that. No, it's that you what? Follow him. But like we said, you can do all the mighty works you want. Some people just not going to repent. So am I shocked that you give them scriptures and they're not going to repent? No. It shouldn't shock nobody. If, if, if the miracles can't do it, you know you're speaking a few words that they don't believe ain't going to just fix people. All right? But that's how you get clean. Elder? Mike, I was going to ask you because you were saying something about you You would have, when they went through the Red Three, if, if you had have saw that, there's certain things you would have done. I, I didn't catch you. Uh, look, all of, but remember, we did say at one time, if we saw what they did, I forget what, what scripture it is, where he said, we would have surely not done this. He said, you the one that killed the prophets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. And how you deal with, how you deal with your relationship with God now will reflect what you would have done. Because everybody get mad. Oh, when I see Adam, I want to punch him in the face. He done messed this up. No, you messed it. You, you had a clean slate now. When you get forgiveness from God, you had a clean slate. What's stopping you now? She's always easy to blame somebody else. Brother Kai? Yeah, and, and, and like just to add on to what you were saying, the works was done, you know, to lead them back to the Father so they can repent because all the sin and stuff they was into, it was mm -hmm. causing these sins. It was causing leprosy. It was causing, you know, certain illnesses in them. So you white as mayonnaise, you know, he heal you. And what you do, you turn around and you fall back and start worshiping an idol God. You know, you start breaking the commandments. Now you know what, what's right and wrong at the end of the day because you've been following him. He's been, you know, teaching you about the most high, teaching you to keep his laws. But you go and, you know, you done set your hand to the plow and you turn right back into your vomit at the end of the day. You know, and people ain't teaching this stuff in these churches, beloved. They ain't teaching you that Jesus said, look, you, you you ain't repent, you know what I mean? So, you know, mm -hmm. um, basically it's causing people to live in a state of continual, continuously uh, lawlessness, man. You know, because if they're not teaching, look, you have to repent and turn from your wicked deeds. Yep. They're teaching that, you know, all this stuff is nailed to the cross. So therefore, every time you, you know, do something contrary, you fall on your knees, you start crying, snot out your nose and say, God, forgive me. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just stop doing the things that's offending God. And they're using God, beloved. You know, they're not offering themselves up as a living sacrifice. They are using him for what they want to use him for. And then they go on their merry way. Yep. <laughs> Sad. God, he's not, he, he, they don't put him as God like he is in the Bible. He's the genie. That's what they want. They want a genie. When I'm in trouble, I'll, you know, I'll come to God, I'll say I'm sorry, and this is how I want you to answer me, right? He's the genie. That's how we stay, we're taking God, all right, Brother Kai? Yeah, and at one point in time, you know, uh, me and Rodney always talk about this. They was following him for fish, fish and loaves. And look, I'm pretty sure that fish was good. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> you know oh my. I'm pretty sure that fish was good, but. All praises. Right. I'm glad you, a, Brother a Kai. I'm, right. 
Brother Go ahead, Kai, I'm glad you brought that out because you're right. Mm -hmm. They weren't even following you. They came back for more food. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Israel for you. Mm -hmm. Love the food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not because he was healing people, raising the dead, and doing all type of mighty works of the most high. Because of fish and bread, they came back. That's mm -hmm. a shame, man. To be that carnal minded. Beautiful points. We need to know ourselves, right? That's the thing about history. Learn your history so you don't want to repeat it. Even this world got that, right? That's why you learn history, so you don't repeat it. So we need to listen to these things um, that was happening in our past so we don't follow under the same example, right? We don't have to go through certain things. Let's learn from it, all right? Let's not do the same mistakes that our forefathers and foremothers have done, right? We can be better if we learn from those things. Okay. And All right. just like, just okay. like you. Um, it is like with Israel, you know, what the Bible always tells us keep the commandments and stuff. Mm -hmm. Our people never want to listen. It's like we keep going to captivity, captivity, mm -hmm. captivity. It's like the <laughs> same thing is happening. It's like they're All not right. learning. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's sad. It's like it's the same thing. And he's putting the same thing on us every time. All right, you don't want to listen. I'm going to get somebody to take y'all over. Boom, they get taken over. Then we what? We cry, Lord, please help us save us. God, like, you know, I do love my children. All right, I'll deliver y'all. Then we start what? Messing up again. He's telling, don't do it. Don't do it. I'm going to put you in the same bank. Here you go. And we're doing the same cycle. The same, the whole Bible is the same cycle. Israel uh messes up we go into captivity we cry to god god save us we start being good for a while then we go back to it then we go into captivity then we cry to god it's the same pattern so we can see right what pattern we in now what we in captivity again they start busting us over the head some more start killing a little more words what we start doing crying and crying and crying but now there's a lot of us not even crying to god we we cry to everything else but that's another story all right it's the same cycle. Let's learn, beloved. Come on. Come on. All right. Verse 21. Woe unto thee, Chorizan. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you have been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. All right. So um, I think it's a place in, in uh, Galilee, but I know the Bethsaida is a place. All right. So he's saying, listen, y'all. I'm, I'm warning, I'm saying woe to y'all because if the mighty works which were done in you, if they would have, if these people would have got these works that I'm doing to y'all, because what it say? He did a lot of mighty works there, right? So he must have been doing a lot of healing and things of that nature. You do some mighty things there and they didn't repent. He said, listen, if I did this to Tyree and Simon, he said they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes, right? When did our people used to go in sackcloth and ashes specifically? What would they be doing usually? Fasting. All right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Usually fasting. The time of mourning, a time to, you know, want the most high to hear them. You know, they the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry, you know, hear me. You know, I'm crying, you know, what I mean, I'm I'm fasting, I'm 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 showing that I'm I'm in this humble state naturally, right? So he's saying, if I did those mighty works, they would have turned back to God. But oh no, no, not y'all. This is God's people. I'm gonna try like this is our people. Other people will turn back to God if he did what he did uh, with us. They said, nope, not y'all. Told you, we a special kind. We a special kind of special. This is how hard-headed we are. Other people would have woken up, but no, not, not us. Okay? He, remember, he said, I'm, I'm going to get them. I'm going to upbraid the city. I'm going to cause, I'm going to rebuke them now because they, they should have changed after these mighty works been done. All right? But they didn't repent. Verse 22. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than you. Mm. Mm -hmm. He said be more tolerable. It'll be more understandable for what? Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. Why is that? I throw that question. Why, why is Christ saying that? Why ought it be more tolerable? What does that mean?
Some people read this and say, see, Tyree and Sodden, they're good. Let's see if we can get some understanding. Let's keep reading. Maybe we can bring something out to it. And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee have been done in so so Sodom, it would have remained it unto this day. All right. Now he's talking about Capernaum. All right. So I think this is a city in Galilee as well. It was flourishing. Right. And look at this. This is something just a, a little uh, little nugget which are exalted unto heaven. Was Capernaum in heaven as people think in the sky or where the father is? That's what that's saying. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So heaven is a state because heaven usually talk about elevation. So when somebody's um, when they say they are exalted to heaven, they're getting what this kind of like this high minded. They they think they the they the man, they the nation, right? I'm I'm above everybody else, right? And we do so, kind of the same thing with agriculture. I mean, uh, like architects and stuff, like well, uh, like the penthouse. They say the penthouse, right? That's usually high up, right? That's where the more people things higher up is more important. So they have the same kind of analogy. So the same thing with this, which are exalted to heaven, shall be brought down to hell. It's not talking about fire and brimstone like that. It's talking about what? Being brought down very low. Hell is a condition, okay? So Capernaum, they, they exalt themselves up to heaven, but he said, ah, you're going to be brought down to low. You're going to be humbled, okay? For if the mighty works which have been done in Sodom, it would, I'm sorry, which have been done in thee, have been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. What is something that happened in Sodom? If anybody remember mm -hmm. Testament, what happened in Sodom? What is Sodom usually known for? Usually, the whole world I'm saying was Sodom known for. What is Sodom known for? I don't want none of them, what elders showing on this one. Sodom, boy, you might know that Sodom and Gomorrah. What happened? What happened in Sodom and Gomorrah? Anybody know? All right. One of the brothers. What happened in Sodom and Gomorrah? Okay, Sean got his I'll up. put it in. I'll oh, say okay. something in. They yeah. got destroyed for their wickedness. All right. Yes. That's where their whole thing about they trying to grab the angels and do all this stuff and anyone diverging. So absolutely. Sean, go ahead. You got to add to it. Yeah, uh, uh, this is on point. It was destroyed for the um for the wickedness, you know. The uh, you know that most sides of the angels there you get to lock his wife, his family, and they was trying to get him. So there was no kind of uh, repentance in that city. So mm -hmm. they got destroyed. So they did we read verse twenty four? I'm sorry, did we read verse twenty four? Um, no, not yet. Oh, no. Mm -mm. Okay, read that, then I'll go over 23 and 24 again. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than you, than mm -hmm. thee, for thee. All right, so the first thing, because some people might get trapped, it's not saying that Sodom is okay. That's mm -hmm. not what this is saying in verse 24, because some people say that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment for thee. See, Sodom, was it wasn't that bad. No, no, no. He's saying more tolerable. Why is it more tolerable? Because y'all got something that they didn't get and y'all didn't turn. He's saying that they got that, they would at least turn. I hope y'all get in the context of what's going on here. All right. So he's just saying more tolerable. Um, go ahead. I seen a hand. Um, oh, you had your hand up? Yeah. Sodom is actually a great picture, too, of what's, what he keeps telling us continue that narrow is the way and straight is the gate and few there be to find it. It's a beautiful silhouette. It's, it's a silhouette picture of how tight this thing really is because we got to realize that they had other family members that were there as well. They knew people as well. It doesn't tell us the number of people that were in Sodom. We don't know if it was 50 or 60,000. We don't know but it does show you how many actually got out. And even one that was on their way out still didn't make it. 
So it's, it's a it's a great silhouette picture of of making this making it through the. No, um, great point. So it's saying as quick as that was, they would have turned back if they seen the mighty works done. Beloved, there's a lot of things that God is doing for us. And we don't want to be like this and getting high minded and thinking, you know, we're getting this stuff and receiving it. Oh, because we're so special and not turn from our wicked ways. All right. All right, let's keep going. We're almost done. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and has revealed them unto babes. Who is the Lord of heaven and earth? The Father. The Father, most high God. Mm -hmm. All right. Who is saying this? Christ. <laughs> Nice. Stop letting somebody tell you something <laughs> like they're higher than Christ or they know more than Christ. No, I know Christ said this, but he don't really mean, beloved, he said, who is the Lord of heaven and earth? He tells you who's greater than him. He tells you it's his father. Stop letting somebody come that don't have to have half understanding and mix us up from what Christ clearly told us. Okay? So he's given thanks to him, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things. Who hid it? Thou. And this is why we have to understand it. This is why we need the spirit, beloved. Thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes. See, some of us are not going to be able to do certain things because we are high-minded. We feel like we're wise and we're prudent. Right? We too wise, we too prudent. And God ain't dealing with that. He's looking for what? The humble. People that's babes. Babes are what? Um, I think Val talking about hunger and thirst after righteousness. What are, what are little babies doing? That's all they do. Eat, sleep, and, and crap, right? Be hunger and thirst after righteousness. You are the ones that God revealed these things to. And it has to be what? The Father. This is why when, when Peter was talking, he said what? Flesh and blood didn't reveal it. Who revealed it to Peter? What did Jesus say revealed to Peter? The Father. The Father. He's the one that reveals things to you. So when you... Dang, I didn't know the, uh, the Sabbath day, we had to keep that. But now I see it. Who revealed that to you? That's the Father. If you know the dietary law, you ain't supposed to be eating certain things. Who revealed that to you? The Father. It ain't us. We don't have no power to do that. We can't, we have to have the Father reveal things to us. So there's nothing we need to give credit. You have to give credit to man for it. That's the Father. I need you to know that. Give credit to who credit is due. This is why I say you need to know how to, you need to know to praise him because he is doing it. Go ahead, Elder. And I did put it in the chat, John 6, 44. Mm, okay. No man cometh unto the, except the father. Yeah, no man come unto the father, you know, and but Christ had to bring you there. So Christ coming to them and presenting them, that's the father telling you, listen, I want you to go there, son. All right, I want you to go there and I'll talk to them. But a lot of times they couldn't see it. All right, brother, let's keep going. Even so, father, for it seemed good in thy sight, mm -hmm. all things are delivered unto me of my father. And no man knoweth the son but the father, ne neither knoweth any man the father save the son. And he is whomsoever the father the son will reveal him. All right, let's break down slowly. Verse 26, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. What is allowed, God allowed to happen. He said it's good. You seen it was good that they, the babes get it and not the wise and prudent. Why? Because the babes are getting it. And we know they couldn't get it unless you seen it was good. You seen it was acceptable. Okay? The only reason some of us getting this stuff, this knowledge, 
not some of us, all of us get any kind of knowledge or anything is because the father seen it was good for you to get it. I'm, I want, I hope somebody understanding this. You are here, you're listening, you're getting this stuff because the father seen it was good for you to re receive it. It was good for you to be. It. All things are delivered unto me of my father. Let me read that again. All things are delivered unto me of my father. Anything I got, the father has given me. All right. The disciples, the father, he's saying the father gave, he gave me that. The miracles you see, the father gave me that. The words I speak, the father gave me that. Okay. And no man knoweth the son, but the father. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know the father. All right. No man knoweth the son but the father, all right? So we don't know, that's saying you don't know the son. The only reason you're gonna reveal, matter of fact, I ain't gonna give you all the answer. What is this saying? We teaching, what is this saying? No man knows the son but the father. What are you talking about? Do you even know you? What is, what is Jesus talking about? What is he saying there? No man knoweth the son but the father. We can look at this and, and some people can mix this up. What is that saying? And no man knoweth the son but the father. All right, let's go to the next part. Neither knoweth any man the father save the son. Anybody want to take a stab at that part? The answer's in the verse, just so we know. I ain't throwing no trick question at y'all with this one. Uh, I'm guessing that no one really knows Christ or the Father except the two of them that know each other. Mm -hmm. Only Christ really knows his Father completely, and the Father knows his Son completely. Mm -hmm. Just a stat. No, no, that's that's very that's very good. Let's take it home. So that second part, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and then what's the last part? And he to whomsoever the son will reveal him. Mm -hmm. You only, this, this is a, a big point of Christ saying, Christ saying, you don't know the father unless basically you know me. I have to reveal the father to you. Mm -hmm. No man go to the father except it be through me. So Christ is telling you a lot of time, you ain't just skipping around me and, and knowing the father. No, you have to go through me. Because this is why he's saying some people, some people's thinking, um, when you looked at, you know, the Jews and everything at this time, what were they saying? Oh, we ain't believing in you. But they still believe what? They dealing with the father. But Christ saying, uh-uh, you got to believe in me to, to, to know the father. And it's what Paul was saying, because they was they were so caught up in the law. He said, listen, y'all, if you don't know the son, you ain't doing the father. You can do what the laws all you want. You have to know the son to get to the father. And I think he talked about the sheepfold. You have to go through the door. Anybody else that goes around is a, a, a thief and a robber. You have to go through the door. Christ was that door. You have to go through me to get to the Father. This is what he's saying. And that's what I'm saying. They change it up, but it's the same thing. You not getting to know the Father unless you go through me. And the Father saying what? You ain't going to know my son unless what? I reveal him to you. Everybody's not going to accept Christ, but he's saying, I'm going to have to reveal him to you. That's why the father saying, that's why he's saying the, the, the disciples you gave me father. I rejoice because you've given this to, to the babes. What do you mean? What the father didn't give, give this stuff to the babe. That's Christ talking. No, no. The father is directing Christ. He's only saying what the father told him to say. He's only doing what the father told him to do. So you go only know Christ if the father allows it. 
And you're only going to know the father through the son. Because the son was prepared that that will be what our mediator or our high priest to what? Present us to the father. It's kind of sometimes a more confusing way, but that's what it's dealing with. Okay. Um, anybody, everybody good with that? We need to break it down anymore. We're good. We're good. We're good. Anybody had any questions or something they wanted to add to it? I'm not sure if I've seen it in hand, but they're all down now that I see on the screen. All right, let's keep going then, brother. Come on to me, all ye that are lab all ye that labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Read that again. Come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. <laughs> that other verse is burden. Yeah, I, I do that sometimes all the time, but that's good. Mm -hmm. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, okay? And I will give you rest. I think this is Julie talked about it a couple of weeks ago. She brought out, you know, casting all your cares upon him, oh. right? Christ is telling you, remember, remember people that was brokenhearted, the captive with the gospels for, right? To break those things. He said, bring it to me. He said, and I will give you rest from it. Beloved, if we're dealing with depression, anxiety, all those things, those spiritual things that's attacking our mind and our spirit, give it to him and what? He'll give you rest from it. Verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am mm -hmm. meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Learn of him. Learn that he's a meek God. He's lowly. All right, we need to learn these things. We need to learn of God. Okay, verse 30. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. All right. This is the God we serve. He's given us a message, beloved. We shall be feeling all over burdened or overwhelmed. You know, we if we overwhelmed, we got probably too much stuff on ourselves. And, and the Father's directing Christ to say, throw it on him. He's like, I'm strong enough. I can, I can carry it. Throw it on him. There's some things it can be too much for us to hold. And a lot of us are holding things that, you know, is wearing us down. We're getting tired. We're getting weary and well-doing. Because some of those things, we need to give it to God. Stop holding on certain things that God is saying, let go. Some of us holding on maybe reputation. We, we have to clear this up. We got to clear this up. Listen, ask God for repentance. Say, God, forgive me. And if God forgives you, don't worry about no man holding something over you. All right. Anybody got anything to add? Are we all right? We all right? All right, that was chapter 11, okay? That's Matthew chapter 11. We're going to stop there. And um, next week, I will, um, I'm going to have a lesson. I'm going to, I'm going to put together a lesson maybe for next week. I think we did a lot of, uh, did at least two or three chapters. So I'll try to get a lesson in. Um, and then we'll come right back to the Matthews reading uh, the following week, Lord's willing, all right? All right, beloved, nobody have anything? We'll stop it there.